All right, Ultimate Hoops Nation. Uh, my name is Reed Nelson. This is Izzy Elkfoss. This is This Week in Rec. We are in the Sweet 16. Uh, wonderful night of basketball. What are your thoughts? Uh, it's pretty good. A lot of upsets. Almost six upsets? Well, we'll go over each game uh, line by line, and then we're going to uh, preview tomorrow night's game. So uh, we're going to start with uh, Damien Sports Barbershop, who, hang, who hung tough with Big Smash throughout the entire game. With about 90 seconds left, Big Smash decided it was, uh, it was time to play. Um, and, uh, but, but a lot of credit goes to Damien's. They, they played extremely well. Um, and then the, Red De or the Rebels took down the Red Devils. Um, any, any thoughts about those two games? Well, I watched the – I was playing before the Red Devils game. Rebels, oh, yeah, I was playing on the other court. And I went over, and apparently it was a five-point lead with a minute left, I want to say, and they just kept turning the ball over, and they parted the seeds for Moses Jansen, and he laid it up to take a lead with, I think, seven seconds left. And then they had, like, a horrible play call. I didn't even know what that was. And uh, they got a really bad shot, and the Rebels won. I really thought the Red Devils were going to – I honestly thought they were going to win it. Well, yeah, that was your team. That was your team to win the whole thing. So uh, tomorrow night, Big Smash over Rebels. Last two times, or Big Smash versus the Rebels. Last two times these two teams played, uh, Big Smash has won. Uh, I think first game was with Jansen, second game without. Uh, but they've had some good battles. What, what do you what do you foresee happening tomorrow night? If Jansen plays, I'm not. I'm never going to pick against that guy. I mean, he, he somehow I don't know what he does, but he wins when he plays. And when his when he doesn't show up, his teams lose. It's not a coincidence. It's remarkable, actually. Um, I think with those two, if they, if the Rebels show up with a full lineup, if Jansen, Dupont, Monska, Pat, I mean the whole gang show up, I don't think Big Smash can can win. Uh, the Rebels are a team that if if Paul Ferber can keep his head, they'll frustrate Big Smash, and Big Smash will implode. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that in the second half, the Rebels will go on a large run, and they'll win the game by double digits. That's my prediction. Uh, Big Smash played horribly tonight. That's the bottom line. I mean, they, they just happen to be going up against Damon Sports Barber Shop, who, who I'm is. Next season, I, you know, as far as, you know, we lost, I just want to say best of luck to the team we lost to. Um, Briggs is over there. Y'all did a good job. We'll be back. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. We'll see you next season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No worries, no worries. Hi, Mom. So, I mean, Big Smash played awful tonight. Uh, they, they actually deserve to lose the game, to be honest. And and if they play that way tomorrow, it is going to be a double-digit loss. Um, I don't necessarily see that happening. I think they'll be – I mean, they didn't take – we didn't take Damien seriously at all. So, um, Gorillas over Bluehorns um, in – I guess you'd call it the upset of the night. I mean, if, I, if I'm – putting a line for that game I'm calling it about even beforehand I mean that's it that's a coin toss to me uh, and then fob five over St. Ball so you were involved in both of those games uh, what are your thoughts on either they were both blowouts um, neither game was close playoffs is a different beast in the regular season I've been saying it the whole time I, I was hoping that the girls would turn around the playoffs and we did just that we looked really good tonight um, and you know the blue horn all these teams the one two and three seed they lost in the playoffs, and the the Nets surprised me because that team's got the pedigree. They they got a great lineup, and I just don't think it was clicking for them tonight. But you know, the Bulls and the Blue Horns, their rosters aren't strong enough to win four games in a row in this type of setting. And it showed tonight. Blue Horns had an off night to start the first half. They started making shots in the second half, but they just couldn't. They couldn't get it going. They didn't, they don't have enough firepower essentially to beat. You know the gorillas or some of these better teams if they really start to turn it on that's what happened and Saint, for St. Ball only having five tonight really hurt uh, Lures obviously hobbled with an injury and not having Reagan tried there big loss um, obviously Pinkett as well so I'm not surprised really surprised at the St. Ball outcome because they're going iron five with with no Reagan tried no no three-point threat really Gorillas versus Fob Five, nine o'clock tomorrow. Uh, you said two seasons ago that if they played off, played against each other, that you would play for the Fob Five. Does that still stand? Uh, yes, I'm playing for the Fob Five. Um, I'm playing against my own franchise, and it's only because of necessity. Brian's going to play with the Gorillas. I'm going to play with the Fob Five uh, because Fob Five only have four tomorrow, so I'll be the fifth. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Big Smash, number 17 seed over the Bulls. Again, um, this was a 17 over a 1. Um, if I would have given you a line before the game, I would have said Bulls by 6. Uh, this wasn't a, a monstrous upset. 
other, other than the fact that it was a 16 point win um so i mean i i, I think that was a that was a statement by uh, by big smash now they uh, they had lost to the Bulls earlier in the season when they should have actually won that game. So um, I, I know they were gunning for some revenge. And then them blows a lead late to the Turtles. And he, here's the bottom line. When Ryan Jansen's on the court late in the game, I mean, he's going to will his entire team to victory. It's just going to happen. You know, and if it's close, it just, it, 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 if they played that way the whole game, it would have been 75 to 20. They just, they just manhandled them the last 90 seconds. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, people are going to think I'm, I'm gay or something, talking about Jansen all the time, but the guy is incredible. I, and he doesn't, you don't really notice him in, unless you really pay attention. And he's he's a great player. Uh, I, I still think he's the best player in this league. Um, and his and his record proves it. He's, he's awesome. Pig smash Bulls is something, like I said, uh, the Bulls, they're not an 8-0 team by any means. Um, I'm shocked that they got to 8-0. They got a little lucky with their schedule. They got a few good wins, but um, they're not they're not a number one seed. Uh, Kelvin Bellola goes six for six in that game uh, for Pig Smash, and uh, uh, I'm not real sure about the lines from the Turtles, but again, they took down them. Now they'll be without Greg Regenscheid tomorrow night, um, I believe, but they did handle Pig Smash earlier in the season easily. Uh, so who do you see coming out on top of that game? I don't think Greg, Greg isn't as important on the Turtles as he is on St. Paul. Um, so I don't think they'll miss him as much as St. Paul missed him tonight. But it, with those two teams, the Turtles, Pig Smash always worries me because they have the ability to self-destruct. And I will never, ever, ever pick a team that goes up against a good team, a defensive team, that has the ability to self-destruct. A couple bad calls or a couple, you know, the, the Turtles will play them tough and They'll start complaining. They'll stop playing defense. They'll start jacking up shots, especially if they fall behind. And I don't see this game being close either. The Turtles tend to let teams in, but Big Smash or Pig Smash really isn't a good matchup. I mean, it's not a good matchup for them. I think the Turtles will win by 11. It, it was our worst matchup of the season, easily. I mean, we, we were dominated in every aspect of that game from start to finish. Um, so, so you're calling a Rebels-Turtles Final Four. Which would be uh, which would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Gotta love those. Um, well, <laughs> at least they're not going to be in the championship. So, okay. Uh, Bull South over the club, double overtime thrill ride. Uh, we actually have uh, Romero Nelson's game tying shot in uh, regulation, which we'll show right now. <laughs> Uh, that was Romero Nelson who tied the game in regulation. Uh, they went to the second overtime, and then the Bulls just kind of took over. Um, I, I, I don't want to say that the club self-destructed a little bit, but I feel like they thought they had that game, and they really let it slip through their fingers. They're, they're not going to forget that one for a long time. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. I really wanted to see the club win. I, this is the thing. People talk about Fridley being weak. Not anymore. <laughs> I mean, and it kind of bothers me because it, Bull, or, Bull, the South – I mean, Bloomington really isn't that much better than Fridley. Fridley's got some good talent. These teams are good. I mean, same ball, lost to Fob 5. Um, Damien's in Big Smash, obviously, they're playing the same league, but Damien's look really good for a 20 seed. Um, I mean, even the club almost beat the Bulls South, who a lot of people consider title favorites based on their talent. Um, obviously, Kavarian playing. I, I figured Kavarian playing for the club, it would be a very, very close game, and it was. Um, he missed, he's actually the reason why they're winning, but he missed some big free throws in that game, and I think that ended up costing him. But with Kavarian, you take him and you, you ride him down the stretch and you hope he makes the free throws. He had a little jitters. He missed, I think, three in a row, um, and that was essentially the difference. you got to make your free throws down the stretch, and I think he did it last season as well. Um, so late game, Kavarian might not be a bad guy to follow. I think it, I think he's got some Derrick Rose in him. It's in his head. So uh, uh, maybe probably the upset of the night, I would say North Stars over Nets. I, I I just feel like that's a bigger upset than Pig Smash over uh, over uh, Bulls. So obviously obviously Jason doesn't agree, but uh, but I mean they looked good tonight. They did not look like an what are they a 19 seed, 18 seed? Uh, I, th I think they're an 18 seed. They they did not look like an 18 seed. Could this team make a run and uh, take down the Bulls South tomorrow? Well, and I mean, I think it depends a lot on Romero as well. I think that's obviously the big question where he plays. So, If I'm Romero, I play with the North Stars. Um, 
he he's more important to the North Stars. On um, Bull South, he's just there. He's the fourth option. I mean, so you he's going to pick against the Bull South two nights in a row. No, uh, excuse me. I, I was thinking about Kavarin. Yeah. I, I I don't even know what I'm thinking Kavarian, right now. Rod Dudinsky. I mean, Powell. I mean, or um, uh, Jesus. Romero doesn't. It's getting late. Sorry. Romero actually doesn't really get involved in that offense very much. Um, I think the North Stars need him. I think Rowe against Rod would be a great matchup. If I'm him, I play with the North Stars. And who's your, uh, who's your prediction for that game? If Rowe plays with the North Stars, the North Stars will win that game. If Rowe plays with the Bulls, the Bulls will win that game. And he's not, it's not like Rowe is a huge you know, elite player in this league. But when, you're not, when you don't have anybody that can guard Rod on the North Stars, if you remove Romero, they're going to be in trouble. Uh, and you never made a Fob 5 gr- uh, Gorillas prediction? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, taking Bryant off the Fob 5 leaves Dustin. Now, here's the thing. Dustin gives Bryant tons of trouble. Um, I, would, I would lean Gorillas winning that game. Uh, they'll, have, they'll have six. Pop five will be playing Iron Five. Uh, it'll be a. It actually, I think it'll be a really good game. The styles are completely different, so I think the Grills will win. But I think it'll be a close game. Are you going to throw the game for the Pop Five? I might jack up a left-handed shot with a minute left. Okay, so um, All-Star balloting uh, award awards balloting are out. The five the five All-Star nominees for Rec are Anthony Thompson, uh, Kavarian Williams, um, Josh Hoyle. Uh, Antoine Lynch, and I'm blanking on the fifth one. Who was it? Hoyle, Thompson, Lynch, uh, Kavarian. Uh, And Ryan Samuelson. So those are the five All-Star nominees. Uh, We're having the banquet Friday. For, 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 excuse me, for MVP. Those are the MVP candidates. We're having the banquet on Friday, September 27th at the Buffalo Wild Wings in Roseville. Um, we we got to get more people to come out. It's such a good deal. We're, we're, we're giving away free beverages, Dude, they, you know, to, for, to, to a certain time. <laughs> Dustin's already committed. Dude, I, I mean, but we've been giving away free beverages for three seasons now. People don't come. I went and they were giving away the... Free sauces. Free sauces. B- Buffalo Wild Wings always hooks us up. So um, so join us for that evening. Staff, open, rec. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow night. And uh, thank you. That's this week in rec for this week. Have a good night. Let's stay in rec.